Hi, y'all. It's AGP here, and it's Wednesday. So you know it's time for another AGP video. <laughs> Hi, y'all. So obviously, we've gotten inside the... This is the last Inside the Part series for The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, the Inside the World. We got the Inside the Details. I uploaded my reaction to all of them. The Inside the Story. The Inside the Gameplay. I put it all up there. Reacted to the State of Play. What I haven't done is giving y'all too much info recently which i need to fix because that's really my thing i do a lot of info but i i make some reactions because that is also my thing and there will be gameplay of course on last was part two on this channel but obviously uh there's been a lot going on and it's affected us all and you know we could talk about that later may make a video about that but right now we're gonna have fun we're gonna watch this and then we gonna you know we're gonna talk about it or whatever all right so let's do this 18, 18, R18, 18, 18, okay. The world of The Last of Us is dangerous. To say the least. Unless you're living in a protected area, there is something lethal around every corner. Makes Once you venture out of your home, you're in danger. And where we're taking the story and where we're taking Ellie is, like, each step of the way, she's putting herself in more and more danger to bring these people to justice. Yeah, there, there's all kinds of wild stuff going on in Last Week's Part 2 and the added mechanics I would and say everything. that the it's world, in every sense of the word, is bigger than Last of Us Part 1. Well, yeah, there's Both a whole the scale and aspect, the though. amount of physical space that exists for you to explore, for you to encounter other people. Yeah, this route has its perks. Our hope is to make every corner a challenge, make every decision hard for Ellie. And so we do that not just in the gameplay you experience, but also in the level design. So part of that is making certain experiences really hostile, be it through weather or through rivers or, or craggy cliffs or slick snow. But we also use it in terms of how blind the player is. Like, what can they see? How safe do you oh, feel? Right. Can you see a threat coming around the corner? You never know if the bullets in your gun are going to be enough. You never know if you can stop and bandage your arm. You can never fully breathe. And we want you to be in alignment with Ellie, who can never fully breathe when she experiences this trauma. That sounds like it. For Jackson tough. specifically, we wanted to make it feel like a very close-knit kind of community that's focused on family, focused on sustainable ways of living. I obviously have the hydroelectric dam generator that's powering the town, so we have you know, electricity in Jackson, which is not something that maybe players would expect to see in the world. But given that we're further in time, we wanted to show that there are certain people dedicated in the world to rebuilding a life that doesn't revolve around killing people and, and scavenging. Of course. That's the whole As you walk around the town, you can hear kids laughing. You could see um, people going into restaurants and eating, and it's a very kind of tranquil town. Now, we know there's all these horrible things happening outside the walls, but they've been able to protect the innocence of, of this town. Jackson, in many ways, represents what is at stake for our characters, uh, a life of peace and Jackson relative clean, so comfort. I'm worried uh, that it's A life where attacked. you can fall in love, a place where children can play, and it's OK. And I think you know, when we were looking at building out Jackson, it's like, okay, how many of those moments can we represent? What's awesome about the world of The Last of Us is it shows just how precious the things that we take for granted in our everyday lives, how precious those things really are. Okay, okay. How precious are they? Seattle compared to Jackson is uh, very different. It's <laughs> more of a war zone, I would say. Part of the interesting thing with Seattle or the Pacific Northwest is that there's all this rain and all this foliage and wildlife, and it's this very lush area that if someone were to settle down, it'd be a pretty good place to settle down just as far as the kind of fruit you can scavenge, the animals you can hunt. And then because it is so lush, because it is so um, teeming with resources, is why there are multiple factions trying to fight over those resources. Of course. One faction you run into in Seattle is the Washington Liberation Front. When the outbreak happened, the military took some pretty drastic actions and quarantined parts of the country. And this was their way of protecting the population that has survived this 
horrendous outbreak. And because of that, it led to rise of these resistance groups. And in the first game, we saw the Fireflies. And we heard about other groups. And in this game, we get to see, here's another group that rose called the Washington Liberation Front that was able to defeat the army and mm. thereby take over a lot of their equipment. And they're this very militaristic they faction. Beat the army to be militaristic themselves. That's a, that's a catch way to it. And at the same time, you have the Seraphites. And they're a religious group that also came up out of the outbreak that believed that the pandemic came because of sin. sin. Wow. They're trying to well, reset mm, could be. the <laughs> world and return it to a better place That's than it was. Point. In The Last yeah. of Us, almost any group that has survived this long has to be dangerous. Um, if you're not dangerous, you're not going to survive. Yeah, you're going to become yeah. someone's victim. And the two factions you run into are both very dangerous. The WLF has a lot of military equipment that they're able to use to defend the area, and they have large numbers, whereas the Seraphites are very quiet and stealthy and able to use the large amount of foliage to their advantage, and they fight more in this kind of guerrilla warfare. If they hide and jump. How you deal with them is going to be different, because they have different language. I'm mad if I'm be communication walking, style. Be the scars will whistle to each other with this different language. No. I'll be damned if I walk some other stuff that you have. You have a bone arrow, they can hit you with arrows and impale you, and you have to pull the arrow out. They have big sledgehammers and melee weapons. The WLF, they have trained dogs that will sniff and attack you. Damn. Dogs are a new level of threat that Ellie hasn't had to negotiate before, and hopefully they create a new complicated choice for the player. We oh, saw in them an opportunity dogs. to, to really challenge terrible. people's perceptions of what a combat setup can be. We wanted to find really hard choices. The dogs themselves have names. They're called out by their owners. We wanted every setup to be challenging. It's gonna have to be crazy. It's crazy. Smelling. Looks like Infected did this. Yeah. How many do you think it would take to bring down a moose? Infected are still a threat in this world. We wanted to take first our basic classes that we had in the first game and say, okay, how do we, what's different about them now? So we'll have scenarios where way more runners, like we can have hordes sometimes of runners coming runners. after you and it might be about just Unclickers. escaping because the odds are just overwhelming. You know, this thing just keeps mutating. There's, there's certain evolutions of infected that you haven't seen before, certain new classes. There's the shamblers, which kind of have these exploding acid clouds uh, when you get near them. You're running down a hallway and you have to suddenly make a decision like, oh, do I want to take the damage and go through this cloud or find some other route or go back the way I came? And it kind of forces you to on the fly kind of make new decisions about how you're going to deal well, with uh, the shambles. threat behind you or potentially in front of you. Much. So again, it's about how do we make fighting against infected intelligence. So when you come on a space, you're listening to audio cues because different classes will make different sounds. If you just go in guns blazing and throw caution in the wind, you could easily get overwhelmed and regret that strategy. That level of uncertainty and instability is something our characters have to carry with them every day as they go out into the world to protect the people they love most. And that threat is banging on their door every day. I really hope you make it. Okay, well, Last of Us Part 2, that is the inside of the world. That's the last of the inside, the whatever series, the, the inside, the dot, 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 whatever you want to call it. We are not too far out from the game's release, so that is very exciting. Like I said, I'm not excited to fight um, any shamblers, but clickers and runners are definitely my least favorite because you got to aim and move and shoot. and You know, I just feel like it's easier to maneuver around some of the bigger ones, but... With that being said, some of these bigger ones actually seem like they might end up being a little faster, which is very problematic. But yeah, yeah, so um, that's all. I really wanted to come and do this reaction here for y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to catch y'all later, all right? I'm going to be back with some more news. You feel me? Because I need some more news. I haven't put up as much news as things like how like how Last of Us Part Two is the biggest ps4 exclusive file size you know fun videos where you're just like you know uh that's cool so naughty dog holds the top two spots with uncharted 4 being in second place but anyways yeah i'm gonna catch y'all next time all right agp out Peace.
my heart up, and the rest of me is.